Um, I think it's going low. We are now. So good night, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Usage Voice. Tonight we have with us Mr. Javon Kadna, the newlywed, the man of God. Um, we want we will be talking about um overcoming because of life. And against all odds, you can still win. You can still win. All right, so Mr. Cardinal, mm -hmm. do you mind introducing yourself to these wonderful people? No problem. Um, good night, everyone. My name is Javon Cardinal, and I'm so happy and humbled to be a participant of being a person to speak on this program. And I hope tonight everyone will just pay keen attention to the word of God or as we seek to eat it, as we seek to go into it. I pray that the Lord will have his way. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So um as young people, I think that a lot of times people really do that we don't really go through much because you know you're probably not at that age to say oh i haven't been through that or or that so they said that you yeah. know you really haven't been through anything as yet so they will probably overlook what you're going through and say you can't tell me anything the things that i've been through you've not been through them. that's it but i think people do forget that we all go through things differently and the way how you go through something i go through it yeah. different this and as different. much as you or i can relate it's a different different definitely thing. so if if i'm supposed to go um downtown the the transportation that i would take um is different from the one that you would yeah. take but we are still going to the same, yeah, it's a same location it's a same destination so people that is said that we what we should like destroy because we go through everything the same or at all. So I won't take up any more time. Manaska, take it away. Amen. Um, so good night again, everyone. I'm gonna go into prayer before I start. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I pray, Almighty God, that you and you alone will be glorified. I pray even now, Almighty God, that even as I set myself, O oh God, to speak on your behalf, Lord, I pray that you will anoint me afresh, Lord. Let your people hear you, O oh God Almighty. Let them not hear me. Let them hear you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Almighty God, that you will have your way tonight, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Show up like never before, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, um, the topic is Amen. Overcoming all obstacles, overcoming the obstacles of life against all odds, you can still win. So, tonight, as we start, we're going to look at what are obstacles. So, an obstacle is a thing that blocks one's way or prevents or hinders progression. That obstacle for you may be different things tonight and as we go through the passage of scripture i pray that the lord will help you to identify what are the different obstacles in your life the word overcoming means to succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty so we are going to learn how to succeed in dealing with an obstacle how to overcome that obstacle now yes. i would like to say that what is the purpose of you overcoming a lot of persons the purpose of their overcoming is merely just to say to people that hey you know i'm not here anymore all of you guys that were chatting me everyone that was gossiping about me i am not here anymore you know you are just purposefully doing that from a negative place where you should be doing it from a standpoint where god is pleased so that's one of the areas i want to challenge what is the purpose of you overcoming what is the purpose of you overcoming 
so as we look to go into the scriptures i'd like everyone to turn your bibles to genesis chapter 37 genesis chapter 37 and i mean we will now only focus on one passage of scripture i'm preaching on the life of joseph do anybody know about genesis you know say from genesis 37 go straight back he talk about the life of joseph all that he endured and i mean all that we know the life of joseph right yeah. we know say boy him to get selling a slavery and whatever but when um ryan told me that hey i want you to speak the lord said to me javon this is what i want you to speak about and i was like god everybody know about joseph like women can come tell people where you understand and in that moment god starts to reveal some things yeah. in the scriptures to me that i believe it is needed in this time so the first thing i want to touch on is that do not blame anyone for the circumstances that you are in the circumstances may be the result of others people Ooh. other people's wrong dealings towards you but don't blame anyone the key thing is that when people wrong you you turn to god ultimately for his healing power and his healing strength we don't want to blame anyone because when we blame people what we're doing is that we're not finding a solution for the problem however we're just deferring it so the problem is still there but it's not being dealt with so that's one of the first thing i want to look at and i'm just listening as i go along so joseph in the story is his father's favorite child he's loved the most because he was the son of his old age and he made a coat with many colors everybody know that joseph colorful coat and whatever now joseph had a dream that the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made a decent to me to him and this causes his brothers to hate him even more and as we look into the story we'll understand before it's a guess what joseph's brother hated him because you know him at the wash belly of the family he's his father's youngest child and get loved the most whatever we know that right so joseph had the dream yeah and having the dream joseph felt safe to go and share his dream with people who he, who he considers to be family and which they are family you understand but in that moment yeah. his brothers were bitter against him and that is one of the things I'm going to address in Joseph's case it worked out because he told them and it him ultimately got his land saved but in reality sometimes what we need to do as Christians is that we don't need to share everything sometimes we need to go by a direction when i nice. tell you to do something you do it you understand yep. when you need to share everything everything that the lord says to us everything that the lord reveals is not necessarily the time yet to share it with others because it might cause warfare right so now we really want to imagine what was the rejection like because joseph saying the dream to his father and father rebuked him but at the same time the bible said joseph's father observed the same so even though his father rebuked him there was still something in the father that was saying you know you know something about this you understand but um can you imagine rejection coming from someone you look up to can you imagine rejection coming from a leader in the church from a pastor from somebody you look up to suppose in this situation now you are joseph you're not in the church you share a dream with a pastor you share a dream with somebody that you wouldn't hire god and that person rebuked you that person is like hey i mean i don't believe that right how do we know as young people approach stuff like that how do we seek to overcome that obstacle because it is an obstacle it is something set before us in our way that we need 
to get over. And so that, I mean, Joseph had to overcome this. So in the Joseph story, the original instruction Joseph got was to go to Shechem to give his brothers food, right? And to see if all is well and bring, and bring him word. So Joseph was sent out by his father because all of his brothers were gone to Shechem. That's where they were supposed to be. Joseph took his father's instruction, went to Shechem. When Joseph went there, he realized that his brothers weren't there. The Bible says Joseph was found by a man. And I consider that man to be a destiny helper. I'll tell you why. Joseph was found by a man, and the man told him that his brothers were there, and they said, let us go to Dathan. Stop one second. The brothers, first of all, all right. were disobedient because they weren't sent to they weren't sent to Dothan, which is another day's journey from Shechem. So Shechem, Dothan is another is another day's journey from where Shechem is. So the brothers were so disobedient. They went from Shechem to Dothan and gave Joseph more of an opportunity to shy away. And this really reveals Joseph's heart because Joseph could have just said, listen, daddy, I'm going to see them. But the reality is Joseph went and he still went all the way. So so one of the things that we have to identify is that Joseph was always concerned about what his father was concerned about. Joseph's father was concerned about mm. his sons, their well-being, and Joseph himself took on that responsibility to find out what his father wanted him to find out. So, isn't it funny sometimes that when we are following exactly what our heavenly father tells us, that we end up in trouble? Joseph was entering into trouble and didn't even know, but he was being obedient. Let me just say that the trouble you are in today might just be ordained by God and will, and will cause you to be noticed by higher authority to carry out the will of God for your life. Your trouble will cause you to be placed in offices to bring change to nations. But can the Lord trust you with pain? Can he trust you with people mistreating you? Can the Lord trust you with people telling lies on you? Imagine your father going to feed. Imagine obeying your father going to feed your brothers. And they see you from afar and plot your demise. But in the midst of the naysayers, there is a Reuben saying, let us not kill him. Sometimes the devil thinks that he has people, but God is the creator. And even though they may be against you, God knows how to work it in your favor. So upon Joseph arriving to the scene, Joseph now sees his brothers in Dothan, right? And good night, Nikefa. Joseph now sees his yes. brother in Dothan. And, um, they see him and they're like, hey, see him that are coming and make kill him now? Whatever. And they're plotting his demise. But God in that moment would raise up Reuben. Reuben is also a destiny helper. So already we identified two destiny helpers. The very first one for Joseph was the guy that he met when he was at Shechem and the guy told him that his brothers were going to Dothan, right? The second destiny helper we identify in the story is Reuben because Reuben was the one that said, let us not kill him. So they stripped Joseph of his coat of many colors that his father made for him and they took him and cast him in the pit. I know you have been stripped of something you have 
held dearly to your heart, but hold on, hold on. Sometimes we lose stuff, sometimes we are stripped, but it is the purpose and the will of Almighty God. You may be thrown in a pit, but God has a plan for you there. Judah, Joseph's brother, said, let us not kill him upon seeing Ishmaelites, traders, slash merchantmen. So they are there. Them threw him in the pit. Right? And they are about to eat their food. So can you imagine them throw Joseph in a pit? And then them the outside of the pit. Like get up on the top surface and thing. Them sit down, them are get ready for eat. And up and seeing some merchants I got Egypt. You know, because Dothan is a place like that. You know, the Bible where traders pass through there so for go Egypt. So they lifted Joseph out the pit and sold him into slavery for 20 pieces of silver. And he was brought to Egypt. So Joseph goes from being his father's favorite child. You know, the one where everybody likes, the one where, you know, him father like not everybody. You know, the one that is loved so much to go in, in a situation where yeah. his father sent him to Shechem to look for his brothers. And Joseph had his father's desire and his heart so much. A man tell him, say, listen, your brother, them, they're both, and you know. And Joseph's all right, saying no more, that's where I'm going. I need to ensure that my father's will what my father desire that I accomplish it. So in this story, they plan to trick the father, right? So the brothers are plot against Joseph. Them, 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 them plan among each other to trick the father that a wild beast had eaten Joseph and they rendered his colorful coat. So the coat Joseph had on, they took it away and they rendered it. And the Bible said them dip it in goat's blood to convince the father of the lie. His father is now mourning. But at this time, Joseph is then sold again unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. So, while, while, there, while there, the Lord was with him. So, can you imagine you all live a good, good life? You all live a good, good Christian life? You yeah, follow what God tell you. And God tell you to do something. And you do it. But no warfare is coming up. Or what we consider to be warfare. Because what we as Christians automatically take on to ourselves is that we see things that are bad as warfare all the time. But not so. Sometimes God right. allows these That's right. things to happen in our life to push his kingdom. And as we go along, I'll show you in scripture. So while there the Lord was with Joseph and made him a prosperous man in the house of his master, Potiphar, Joseph found grace in his sight and oversaw his house and all that he had. But little did Joseph know that a long journey lies a next test. Potiphar's wife told him point blank, lie with me. Joseph refused and made it clear that he cannot do that great wickedness and sin against God. So we see we're even in this, the position, the unfortunate position that Joseph was in. Left his father's house, you know, a young youth as a teenager your brothers did that evil thing to you and you are now sold into slavery you are in Potiphar's house in egypt and i mean the lord is with you you are doing great things and now he's your master's wife to see and like you and you now have the opportunity to sleep with the, your master's wife and Joseph declined it I mean, a lot of us, we can be honest that <laughs> given that 
opportunity for speak with her because it just could have worked out in her favor. It could work out in him favor because can you imagine her sleep with the master's wife? Everything That's good, true. you know, you, you're in the palace, you all live, you know, a top man life and whatever. But Joseph was so, you know, humble. He must, the man just there one place with God where, you know, him willing to sacrifice the pleasures of the world just to see the God's will come to pass. And I want to believe that Joseph never, never had idea with life ago. Joseph just ago with the flow. And that's where a lot of us are today, is that we don't even know where the Lord is taking us. We have no idea of what lies ahead. But we know, say, of obedience put me in the problem. And obedience will be that very same thing that will take us out of the problem. Yeah. So, Joseph refused. Yep. Joseph made it very clear. So she persisted day by day, right? For all those who are getting temptations. Listen, she persisted day by day and Joseph declined. So she caught Joseph alone in the house one day, right? And told him to lie with her. And as Joseph attacked himself from the situation, she caught a piece of his garment and framed Joseph. Right? She waited until the Lord of the house returned and told a lie on Joseph. So she went from telling Joseph, the boy, lie with me, you know, to constantly doing it until it reached a place where she gets physical. For all those who are in temptation, I want you to learn a valuable lesson from this. Now, you are being tempted day by day as the scripture says, make we relate it to our lives because that's how I like to read the Bible. I don't just like to read the Bible as a story. I like to apply it yeah. in my life. I like the scriptures to make sense in this modern time. So, um, I mean, you're being tempted a lot and upon being tempted day by day, the temptation starts to increase because, I mean, Joseph could have earned it for you Joseph never have no woman. You understand? Joseph, I got you. He might do the will of the father. You know, as life take him through, through various circumstances, right? He's going through. But him could have right. healed him, could have him could have lower him stand at the temptation, and he didn't. So for all, all those who are being tempted, please be steadfast. And even as the Bible made it clear that the woman catch Joseph alone in the house. I am making it clear to you guys that any in, in any instant that the devil catches you alone, don't bow. Refuse. Refuse in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't bow. Don't bow to what the enemy wants you to do. You have a, a, you have a great destiny and purpose in God. And on the journey, the devil will send stuff to entice you to ultimately get you off the track of where God wants to take you. So, isn't it funny that while we are already in places we don't want to be and are trying our best to please God, that trouble still seeks to knock our door. But even in trouble, the Lord was with Joseph as he went to prison for being framed. He was favored by God in the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed all the prisoners to Joseph's hand. So while you go through your persecution, you're still prospering. While you go through phases in your life that you do not believe that the Lord is there with you, you will still prosper. The Lord will still allow you to prosper. You know? But somehow, through your trouble, you're still ministering. Joseph is still partaking in ministry, even though he's in circumstances that we would have said, boy, I mean, I know if I could have held the faith. I don't know if I could have been loyal to God. So while in prison, Joseph met two officers, right? Because we just have got through the life of Joseph, you know, and as we got through it, we allow the Lord to bring up revelations and stuff in the Bible. So while in prison, Joseph met two officers from Pharaoh's house, the chief butler and the chief baker. Everyone's supposed to know this story. Joseph interpreted both their dreams, right? So the butler 
and the chief baker, the two man them have a dream. Two man them in our cell with Joseph. Two man them say, yo, you know me have a dream. The butler say Fimon, the baker say Fimon. Joseph interpreted both the dreams. Right? The butler own was, hey, you're gonna be restored in short. The baker's own was, yo, you're gonna dead, you know. So um while Joseph, I tell the butler, Joseph went on to say to him, Remember me when you are restored. Remember me and mention my name to Pharaoh so I can come out of this dungeon. Because I was stolen. I was stolen from Canaan. So we see in the Bible where Joseph is lamenting. Joseph, Joseph feel away. Joseph is down. And with the ministerial opportunity he got, he helped somebody. Right? And upon helping him, Joseph won back a help. Not saying him interpret the dream, forget help. And that's the next thing with people and us as young Christians. Sometimes we do things for people, give back a strength. And the reality is that we're not supposed to do that. When we do stuff, we do it unto God. And that is what I want us to find. One of the most interesting stuff in this story. So, Joseph was innocent. Joseph's faithfulness to God had him going through some very harsh but similar obstacles. So, the obstacle them very harsh, but they are very similar. Because him get thrown in a pit before, and now he's and now he's thrown into prison. A lot of you today are bombarded with what you are going through. But I am here to here today to tell you that sometimes for God to fulfill his will I'm sorry I was getting a call I'm here today to tell you that God sometimes for God to fulfill his will you will not get help right away from who you have helped and that is why it's important to do good things unto God. So, I mean, Joseph helped his brother. He interpret a dream for him. Joseph will get out of prison. But Joseph released the word. Hey, more help. But Joseph never tell the man when he more the help. Right? So, Joseph in a position where he really want to come out of prison. I mean, he's innocent. He's not, he's not even for their Egypt by his standards. Right? Because him not understand in purpose yet. But while going through the obstacles now, Joseph is asking the virgin, yo, may I help you? Please may I ask you for help me forget out of this place. And the guy got out. The guy got out. The Bible says him never remember Joseph. And the Bible says two full years pass and Pharaoh had a dream that no, that no magician or wise men could interpret and the butler remembered Joseph in the prison and that he had interpreted a dream before and the interpretation was true now I want to make something clear that what Joseph said in Genesis 40 verse 13 is actually a prophetic verse 14 is actually a prophetic word in Genesis 40 verse 14 Joseph said to the butler, But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. So that is Joseph releasing a prophetic word. The thing about is the thing about this is that we only see the prophetic as when a man in a robe come and say the Lord says, No, that's not the prophetic alone. We realize that 
prophetic words, whether good or bad, are what we release on a daily basis in our normal conversations. The Bible says that God will judge our idle words. The Bible goes again and says that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And so what we release out of our mouths, yes. my brothers and sisters, are prophetic words. Right? Joseph, I said to this brother, I say, yo, remember me. Joseph never said, remember me next week. Joseph never said, remember me tomorrow. Remember me now. Joseph just released the word without a time. And in the spirit, the Lord was able to use the butler as a destiny helper for bring that word to pass, to connect Joseph to destiny. So, <clears throat> so we see in Genesis 41, verse 9 to 13, where the word he spoke come to pass. So fast forward, Joseph just tell the brother, remember him, right? That was in Genesis 40, verse 14. But now we're going to Genesis 41, 9 to 13 to see the word come to pass. So Genesis 49, Genesis 41, sorry, 41, 9 to 13. Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh. So by now, I mean, Pharaoh of the dream, there is no magician, there is nobody at all that can interpret this dream. The butler is there, and the butler remembers Joseph in prison. And the butler says, Pharaoh, me know me there some things bad in the past, but hear me out. I know a brother, him in a prison, him named Joseph. He interpret my dream and I have seen it. I have seen it come to pass. I know he can interpret dreams. Now, what I want to make mention is that that butler could have lost his life. Remember that butler was thrown in prison already. Yes. So had that butler went ahead, just come out of prison, and be restored to imposition and say, Fear, I know Joseph, you know, help him for come out of prison. That could actually make it worse for Joseph. Because you you don't know, have no credibility. The butler don't have no credibility. The butler don't have no you know the ratings from the king, from the Pharaoh. So in an instant, that would have probably make it worse for Joseph. And that is why I said before, when we do things, we do it unto God. When you give things you don't give, forget about nothing in return. Joseph interpreted the brother dream, and Joseph said, Yo, listen, just remember me, you know. You understand? Suppose Joseph did get bitter over the situation and say, Boy, the man didn't remember me, you know. The man didn't remember me. Look how me interpret the dream for the man. Look how the Lord used me for do it. You understand? So when we do things, it is important for us to remember, say, Hey, a God we do it unto. You understand? We don't look for nothing in return. And that we will protect ourselves and the will of God for our lives. So, um, let me just read 41 for everybody to get a clear understanding. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and flat fish, and they fed in a meadow. Right? Yeah, we know all of that. Fine. So, him get a dream. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. So the man said, boy, Pharaoh, remember, say he put me in a prison. I he did upset. And we dreamed a dream in one night, and, and I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there... And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream. And he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Right? Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of thy out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. 
So now we see where that word come to pass. Because Joseph released that word while he was going through a prison experience. Joseph released that word. Hey, remember me. Hey, remember me. Remember me. Hallelujah. So in that place, Joseph had to be patient. When we are in the obstacles, when we are, you know, in a place where the obstacles of life are presented before us, these are the things that we should look into. We have to be patient because Joseph said to the guy, hey, help. But Joseph never get the help until two years after. Right? It was until two years after Joseph was able to get help. And upon the two years, Joseph was hastily brought out of the dungeon. So can you imagine somebody tell a lie and you say, oh, I have sex with them, you want to rape them, whatever. And um, you went into a prison and you went from prison to be hastily brought out of the prison to go before the Pharaoh. So now Joseph is before the Pharaoh, as the Bible says. And I mean, while, while there, Joseph was tested again. Joseph said, Pharaoh said, I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered and said, It is not me that shall give Pharaoh an answer. Again, my brothers and sisters, Joseph declared a word. Joseph said, Listen, and the pastor of his heart, I want all of us to get that pastor of humility. Joseph said, Listen, and me, and me, I interpret anything. It is God that is interpreting it. Even though I have a gift, I only function. My gift only uh, functions in God. We see where this word has come to pass so tremendously. Right? So in Genesis 41, verse 33 to 36, and it reads, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet, wise, and said. So this is after Joseph interpreted the dream and everything. Joseph is now instructing Pharaoh, so listen, this is what you should do. Right? When the seven years are plenty and the seven years are famine. Joseph is saying, no, therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the, la that the land perish not through the famine. So that is Joseph instructing Pharaoh. So listen, you are survived the splendid the, 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 the seven year famine that's coming. This is what you should do. Set a man. Set a man. I want you guys to hear exactly what the Bible is saying today. In order to overcome the obstacles of life, we must pay yep. close attention to the power of words. Brothers and sisters, your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. Joseph said, set a man. Power. Set a man, and that was the word. That, that, that was the word in that instant. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said, So, Pharaoh a call upon magician, and Pharaoh a call upon the wise men them. But when Pharaoh hear his humility, when Pharaoh hear Joseph's gift, you understand? When the Bible said the gifts of the gifts will carry before great men, the gifts will make room for you, right? Pharaoh was able to discern that listen, can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. 
thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than thou so can we imagine i mean we go from a stage where Where they have a home place, where they have a hometown, right? Joseph the home. His brothers plot to kill him. One of them say, yo, don't make you kill him. And next one say, all right then, throw him in the pit, make him go and stay. And up being there, them see some trade man sell Joseph into slavery. Right? And that's how some of us feel. Some of us feel abandoned. Some of us feel left out. Some of us feel that family, the church, you know, people on a whole now deal with it fairly yes. and what i want us to understand is that god will allow some of these stuff so that his will can come to pass in our lives my brothers and sisters not everything that hurts you is going to kill you some things are to make life more abundantly for others because in this story in the whole joseph story we all know what happened Joseph went on to being second in command in the land of Egypt. He interpreted that dream for the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh was so pleased with him. The Pharaoh see the spirit of God upon him. And the Pharaoh set Joseph over the land. And Joseph was there to give food. Joseph was the one who instructed people, say, listen, this is what we do to make sure we survive. And upon being in that position, the land of Canaan run out of food. I mean, it's a famine all across the world. And Joseph brothers were sent by the father to go to Egypt because the father knew the food. They are Egypt. Remember, you know, the father believed that Joseph is dead. Right? Joseph there now, you know, Joseph reach. Joseph said, yeah, man, you know, life good now. Me a second in command. And Joseph see his brothers coming. Joseph started to cry. And the reality is, if it was a lot of us, we would have ordered our brothers to die. But I want us to see the posture of Joseph's heart. That even though we believe that people are our enemies, we still humble ourselves before God. Because brothers and sisters, Joseph's brothers was his destiny helpers. Joseph's brothers was his destiny helpers because if they didn't sell Joseph into slavery, how could Joseph now go into uh, Egypt being a prisoner, go through the lies of someone telling, you know, them husbands, boy, oh, this man tried to rape me. You know, being in prison for how long and to finally get promoted by the fear of the second in command. Then he interpret a dream and give make room for him, right? He interprets a dream that caused him to get favor. Right? Yeah. And now Joseph is second in command. Joseph makes room for his family. Joseph is the one that provided for his family, for his brothers, the same brothers that in the scripture when we look upon it first we thought they were evil right because even the brothers not even know what they might do the brothers never know and even in the bible joseph went on to say listen what the devil what the devil meant for evil god turned it for good because listen it was meant for evil them wanting to kill him it was meant for evil but God turned it, and that is what I want you to, you guys to, to, to have a, in, a, in your mindset. What the devil meant for evil, whatever thing in your life, whatever situation that is there, that your beliefs are against what the devil, God will turn it for good, and God is turning it even now. Go through the obstacles that life presents from a place of humility, right? What I would suggest is, one, put your flesh under subjection flesh is a very bad thing it's not only sex alone but the reality is the sexual sin is you know is a really is a really tough thing and that is one of the things what i admire about joseph 
Joseph in a position of rejection. Joseph put him flesh under subjection. Joseph was able, by the grace of God, to say no to sex. What I would say is that be content with God's will. Right? While you are going through life's challenges, I would love for you to be content with God's will. We have a will, right? And that is why it is necessary for us to submit to the will of God daily. What I want you guys to observe from this Joseph story, and the question I would like for you guys to ask yourselves is, can I see the big picture despite what I'm going through today? Despite what I'm seeing today, can I still see the big picture? Can I still see God turning it around for me? Because I am sure if someone did say to Joseph, say, Joseph, no worry, no much, don't watch what you're going through. You're going to be second in command. I am confident that Joseph would have got through it more with an expectancy. But when we are going through these obstacles, we, you know, we're going, we're going through it from a place, you know, where we don't know what to expect, right? Because God now just come and splat out everything to me and say, listen, this is exactly what I want you to do. He will do it in steps. He will do it in steps. And it's so important that as we go up in steps, we grow in obedience and we go in obedience. All right? Also, one of the things that I want to point out is that in this story, it makes it very clear that to overcome to overcome these obstacles, we have to be able to forgive. Genesis 45 verse 5. Now therefore, this is Joseph speaking to his brothers. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. So Joseph had the ability to judge them. Joseph was second in command in the land. Joseph could have said, listen, we're not wicked. But Joseph, in a, such a great place of humility, Joseph said, listen, I was sent before you to preserve life. You guys sold me into slavery. But God turned it around and made me the person that will pull this great nation. Because Joseph not only saved his, just his brothers, that's not the case, or his father. He saved his entire nation. And God was able to move upon that nation just because of the obstacles that Joseph had endured. Just because of the obstacles that he had him scale them, right? Him scale every fence. So also one of the things I want us to understand is that long suffering, long suffering is a fruit of the spirit. I mean, everybody wants it fast, everybody wants it quick, and it's not like that. We have to go through some seasons in our lives when we are in great turmoil, when we suffer, right? There will be seasons when you suffer emotionally, seasons where you suffer physically, seasons where you suffer financially. There are seasons in life. But what I want you guys to develop is long suffering. It's a, it is a fruit of the Spirit. And we will need it, especially in these last days. We are going to need to suffer because now we see mm -hmm. greater persecution is coming to the church. And we will need long suffering to carry us through. <laughs> Can you imagine if Joseph was a Jamaican? <laughs> That's why he wasn't Jamaican. Yeah, that's why, you know what I mean? If Joseph was Jamaican, Joseph would have killed, would have killed him brothers. Right? He would have killed him brothers. But one more I will forget from the story is that, listen, so we are God's work, workmanship. And even though we are going through some very challenging times, even though it seems as if all hell has, you know, hell woke up on me, even though we feel away there against all odds you can still win joseph was faced with all odds show me five more people in the bible who have a harder life than joseph 
Joseph had a rough life. Joseph was a teenager when he was sold into slavery. Yeah. Joseph went through years of his life without even knowing, you know, what, what home was like. I, I can imagine Joseph not even remember some stuff about home. But in all of that, Joseph was still able, going through life, to hold on to God. And that is the, that, that is the main thing that we should get from the story that we should hold on to God, whether it is good, whether it is bad. Joseph did not forget God when he was number two man in the land. Okay. Joseph did not forget God when he was favored in the house of Patipa. Joseph did not forget God when he got his... Joseph never forget God, no time. Joseph never forget God when he was no, in his, 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 dungeon, his dungeon situations, right? When Joseph was in the prison, Joseph didn't forget God because we see it clear. Joseph give a work. Joseph give his making way for others. You understand? And it wasn't it, yeah. it, it, it wasn't operating illegally. His yeah. gift was operating legally. Right? God favored him. So what I want us to get from the story is listen. Against all odds, you can still win. It doesn't matter what you are up against. You can still win. It doesn't matter what you believe is warfare is just god preparing you for way for where he's going to take you because listen joseph couldn't just go to egypt like that and just become number two man in the land he couldn't hold up that that is a position that mm. needs stability to be a leader you need to be stable you know you just you just not go up like that and spiritually, we see where God promotes us. Him not just say, all right, then, you reach. You know, God promotes us step by step spiritually for us to grow in him. And so what I want us to, 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 to get from the story is that, listen, doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what comes our way. It doesn't matter how the situation looks. Against all odds, you can still win life is not over go through whatever you see as challenges some stuff in your life that you see as a bad thing is god making ways for you in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth so that that is that is what the lord laid on my heart to share with the body of christ um i hope it has impacted you guys tremendously and I believe that God has spoken. That's what he laid on my heart to share. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Um, first of all, um, I have so many points here. I have so many points here, and I thank you so much. Um, by the way, guys, if you have any questions, just send them in. And we'll be here for just a few more. Um, when you say no, be careful of things that we speak. That is one thing that it took me a while to get because normally I would say, yeah, you know, they're just words. It's not really that much of a big deal. Yeah. And it was when I really realized that. And would you believe that the the, the native things they're the ones that happen to you like faster than the positive yeah and i'm like why I'm not, why 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 but the thing is the things of god will never come to us easy they will never come to us easy yeah. and that is where long suffering really comes in definitely it's crazy because i'm like i'm like god if i'm praying this hard if i'm fast in this hard yeah. if, I'm, if I'm doing that but then god is saying are you really giving me enough yeah the other day um i was here complaining about being inside like for four weeks consecutively not leaving the house and i That's wasn't doing any work i have take work vacation from work i'm up the people in work to do and you know it it, it just really hit me and I just heard the spirit of the Lord say to me, you're about being boring, but are you praying? Are you reading my word? And listen, yes, we probably hear that. 
from Ada complaining stuff. I stop complaining about being boring. I stop complaining about. I just stop complaining because no more realize say we would rather to do everything else yet not pay attention to you know our growth in God. Like I believe that that in this time we should really um take that time out to focus good. on God even no more because a lot even before this a lot of us we have not been praying we have not been fasting because we want to blame it on going yes. out we want to blame it on work we want to blame it on everything but now that we get the time it's like we forget yep. that we ask the God maybe if you give me a work we will um you know I can work around it I can pray um and do all yeah, we don't want to take responsibility but for it we, we're really not focusing on the things of god we don't want to take responsibility and that's one thing that you know we have to to to, to learn especially if we want to grow amen um god will raise us, raise us up in new season um a lot of us we want elevation way too fast we want to to get a certain position and a lot of things. The, the thing is, sometimes the things that we want, God wants to give us. I, even that, even so, is probably not the timing as yet. So we might want it, and even though God is going to give it to us, it is just not the time. Yeah, it's just not. And the we time. want to force it. We want to push yeah. it. We want to do all of these things, but then it's just not the time. I just not, yeah, God man. just don't want to give it to us because one. If he does, are we going to be able to handle it? It can even destroy you. Um, if yeah, he puts us in a situation where you know it, it, it's it's a very sticky situation, like either choose God or choose or choose this thing that you've been asking him for. If God gives it to us, you know we can easily forget about him because we're like and that's 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 the thing to you know for something and by the time him give it to us <laughs> when i remember him when i remember yeah, when he in prayer that's so true. when i remember when he go down yeah. on the ground go, 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 yeah. go pray because we get it no so there's no there's no reason for us to fast yeah. so that was your god yeah it mm -hmm. wasn't the lord go ahead. what because oh, that's oh, what yes. we do. A lot of us we just yes. seek God for things. And when we get the things, we forgot to say, hey, you know our God, you know. So God is not our God. We just believe to say we are using. But that's another sermon in itself. We are using. Yeah. Can I use that? Can I use that? And the thing is, whatever he promises us, we are going to get. A lot of times we I even spoke about this last week. Um, Paula Goldberg, I spoke about this that we delay ourselves. So, yes, a lot of times, especially if we get a prophecy and the prophecy say, Okay, you go look out, um, month of March, and <laughs> you know, if we mess up, if we if we even shift us a, a little, little bit, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that we're going to give it to us anymore. It's just that it's going to be delayed. And yeah. that's the one thing that it really, really messed me up in the past. Because I believe that, oh, once God said it, so even if my ship up, my ship up, then it's really not going to affect me because he said March. Yeah. So I'm going to get it in March, which it does not work like that. No. It does not work there like that. We have to work with the will of there, God. There, there is something set out for Yes. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and a lot of time we have a lot of people, especially on social media, um, talk about the scriptures, talk about applying to applying the scriptures to our lives. Yeah. And we are not doing it. So one thing I always say, um, do not speak about something. You can't help speak something that you you know you haven't overcome yourself because one how is it that you're going to tell me about something that you have to get over it you can't tell me say do this and you'll be fine do this and then we will be over with why aren't you doing it for yourself so you're telling people yeah. this 
happy. You're telling people that, but at the end of the day, you're not doing it for yourself. I want to see it work for yeah, you I first. Think. And then when it works for you, I want you to come and yeah. I want to I want the, the yeah. I want what you're telling me to be a witness for itself. Definitely. Um when when you said we will prosper even through our trials, a lot of people think that there's no way we can be blessed. There's no way we can be, you know, a child of God and then, you know, going through something and it feels as if God is not there with us. He's always there. Like everything He's is worth. just, our lives yeah. is, is just completely in shambles. And that he said, go ahead. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So listen, you might fall short. That never. Stupid. God expect us never. as Christians, as babes in Christ. God know. God knows. You're going to fall that time there. You're mm -hmm. going to fall that time there. But our responsibility as young Christians is when we fall, just get up, just bounce back. The word says it. Just be reminded of the word. He will never leave us nor forsake us. It no matter yes. how bad the challenges of life are. You understand? He will never leave you. He's always there. Yeah. That's his word. Yeah. Definitely. That's true. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true um shannon um mackintosh she said that the test and the mess is a part of our walk Amen. god is here with us yes he will not leave us in the wilderness and that's true he will never leave us and the thing is you know god will when god is speaking to us or that time when god was speaking to us about a particular situation and the thing is, God can be telling us to, you know, stop this, stop that, yeah. and just listen to what I'm saying. Definitely. No, I don't see why we must expect for God that every single time He's telling us to do something, and we, we, we it come like it go to one ear and come to the other one. I wanna hear. It. So we just expect God to keep on talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and carry it with. It don't work like that. It really don't work. It really doesn't. Yeah. He's still not going to leave you. He's just going to leave you to do what yeah. you want to do. And then when you finally realize that what you're doing is not working out for you, then he will say, okay, then are you ready for me to step in now? Because you're doing your own thing and it's not working out for you. So are you ready for me to step in? And a lot of times when I wanted to say that, a lot of times when God gives us something and you know, I even say, let me talk about the delay. Um, if God delays something and it did not come at the time, it's really our fault. And when it does not come, how is it that we're going to curse God? Yeah. We can't because that not that's not that's not on him. Yeah. It's you. Because if God is going to pour something on us, if he's going to do something at that at that time and we're not ready to handle it, then one we we'll probably backslide yeah. two we we'll mm -hmm. forget about him mm -hmm. and it does not even go go for the believers it yeah. goes for the unsaved definitely we can't just yeah. get up and use god no time no day nowhere no place, and that nothing. is why no, and no that is why. we can't just get up and use god and expect that is okay yeah. and that is why the kingdom has structure mm -hmm. understand no one man just go up like that you go through stages of development in the kingdom yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah um let me read this comment um legend he said david said if i lay my bed in hell he is with me feel a praise break um christopher Christopher Nembard, he said that Jesus, um, no, he said that even the children of Israel, despite him being angry with them, he still was there with them, pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. God is always there. Always. He is always He's there. Always there. And we just have to be reminded. We just have to be reminded because the devil will cloud our judgment. The devil will use things that we're familiar with. You know, if you like music, he will use music to try to infiltrate your mind. He will work off of the areas where you're kind of tested in. You understand? And 
we just have to remind ourselves that listen yeah despite what i'm going through god is there that is our joy as christians that is our peace that is our refuge when we remember we call upon the name we remember that he is there Amen. Mm -hmm. and um, Keyshawn Jones, this is Keyshawn, um, Keyshawn's question. Um, what can we learn from Joseph sharing his dream with brothers? He shared his dream twice, but was betrayed. But if he didn't, he wouldn't be sold. Can we conclude that Joseph was sharing his dream in wisdom or in love? No, one thing, let me say this to you. I admire... Um, Mr. Cardinal and Mrs. Cardinal. <laughs> I, I loved what they did. Yeah. They did not post their engagement online. Yeah. They, like, no, nobody never knows them get engaged. And the thing about it is, let me just say this, this before I continue, and everything will post on social media. Because one, and everybody like we, two, some people just want so far, Definitely. three, them just not happy for it. So be careful of what yeah. you share online. And that's the thing too, that if you post something and then somebody out there that's out to, to get you, they go deep, they go so deep to do everything that they can to stop what is happening in your life. So when when I, 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 I applaud um, Shanti and Jago, um for what they did, and a lot of people might be upset that hope that you know we know that they've been dating and we know that you know they, they, they they're in that line to get married and you know we have followed them up yeah and never tell when they get engaged they know the exact date when they might get married yeah but listen my black owner never do it amen and that is something that a lot of us have to learn we have to learn because yeah that that's one thing too that's another delay too. yeah it's not that he he was um he, he was wrong for sharing his dream and again I, I would say it's not that he, he um was sharing his dream in wisdom or in lack of it. Wisdom and in lack of it to be honest i would like to say both. Mm -hmm. hearing hearing yeah um, bro, and to add to that also, yeah. Joseph yeah. thought that he could find solace. He thought that he could find, you know, that acceptance in people. Because if we look throughout the story, right, when he said to, him, to them two times, you know, for me, if I say something to somebody two times, it must mean that me, I depend on them acceptance. You understand? And, and, and I wouldn't consider it Joseph to say it to be like out of wisdom, I would just consider it to be him saying it because listen, I mean, I would like for my family to validate me. I would like for them to approve of it, you know? So in that instant, I wouldn't see it as something that was done out of wisdom, but I could see even where a person make a mistake and it's still, God still finds some way for make it come back to him will. You understand? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm not. I don't know if it's on my end. Are you hearing? Yeah, I'm hearing you. And guys, you can send in your questions now. I don't think I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm hearing you right. Mike is not muted. Trying to see if I can hear. You hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm not hearing. Are you hearing me now? I think that's on my end. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> hmm. I think there's an issue here. Can't hear. Mm. 
Are you hearing me now? No, I don't think so. Let me go again. Everyone, everyone, are you hearing? Are you hearing so I'm me? going to. If you are hearing us, just comment that you are hearing, please. So, you know, we can have an idea what's going on. If you can hear us, please comment. Back on. Hear me now, bro? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm now. Yes, great, I'm hearing great. you. You hearing me? Amen. Yes. Okay. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Facebook. <laughs> Someone said Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Any more? Any more questions? Or should we continue? And another thing about destiny helpers, right? Yeah. We have to be careful how we treat people in our seasons. Definitely. Um, we are going through something, and we we probably see someone, and we don't. We we might just don't that they operate but the thing is a lot of times it's not what we want it's yeah. not how we see things but our destiny help us they come in a way that trust me or and a lot my, my bishop he said this to me specifically yeah. one time or destiny help us and not our friends they're not always yes. our friends one thing i think a lot of us that's one thing we miss in so true because if our destiny help us they're they're uh, you know they're our friends then if they're going to give us a, a, a correction, if they're going to tell us something, then, you know, correction, we're, a lot of times we're not going to feel good about it. And when they correct us about something, because um, they're our friend, yeah. then we're going to, we just might disrespect yeah. them. We just might, you know, just be with them any way we, we, we feel like. So a lot of times, our destiny helpers, they are not our friends, and that's one thing that we have to get out of our heads we just have to get that out and definitely you know a lot of people your destiny might have um come around already but because of food because of or or lack of obedience yeah. because of of us just ignoring what god is saying to us they just might turn back away definitely and that's that's another delay here yeah. So we have to be careful how we treat people because we don't know who God is sending in a certain season yeah. to bless you and to elevate you and to bring you back into that place that you're supposed to go into and even higher. Yeah. People and be also, careful of how you treat yeah. people. And also, bro, I mean, when I look at it, my friend doesn't always see what God will see. And what I mean when I say that is, is that Mm -hmm. In some instances where God wants me to go through some very hard circumstances, my friends will try to protect me from it. My friends slash destiny helpers, right? So in some cases, mm -hmm. God will have to use people that, I mean, would, that they are not friendly and we don't necessarily associate ourselves with them in our friendly instant. Yes. You know, him just kind of use some strangers to push you in our destiny. Because if you did use people that were close to us, I mean, we wouldn't get nowhere. Because some of the challenges that My are God. set out would not get us, anywhere. They are very rough. Some challenges rough. I mean, if a wife, if a friend, if a sister, we better could have taken out of the challenges. Then they would have do it. But God will use people to push you into destiny. Right? And we understand that being yes. pushed into destiny is a very painful experience. Based on the life of Joseph and what he had to overcome, it's very painful. And not everyone will have, you know, a cliche, exact life like what Joseph has. But the reality is that we are all, you know, we are all called to bear pain. 
right? We are all called to endure pain. Yeah. Amen. That's true. And it, how many of us can say if God puts us in a in a in a situation where it, where it's life or death? How many of us can can say that God do whatever you want to do? Take whatever you want to take. Yeah. Like how many of us how many of many of us yeah. could do that? Not a lot of us. Not a lot of us. Just because there's, there's some doubt. Is I, I there's some some something in our faith that's shaking. And we, we just might say, you know, God I you can you can you should take this because it's not a good idea. <laughs> so it, yeah, you know. It's, it's something that we really have to to um look into and i'm trying to find that the one thing it's a question that you asked earlier on um i wrote it down let me see what i can find was it, that, that was question was that, that, that that's the one go again was it the question that can god trust you with pain yes that's it. Let's go with in my book. Yes. Yeah, man. And God really trust you. Can he trust you with pain? I don't I, I don't think people trust a lot of us. No. I really because don't think so. The reality is I mean, um who wants to who wants pain? Like no one wants it. But to get where we need to be, no, we have to understand that pain is a part of the process. And we have to mentally adjust our minds. You know, we have, to, we have literally yes. we have to adjust our minds. Say, listen, it's gonna be painful, but God is still good. You understand? Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> sometimes God puts us in a in a in a situation, and we want to run from it. There, there's this um, particular story that my bishop he shared one time. And he said someone called him and they said that, you know, Bishop, I'm going through hell. And he replied to the person and he said, Well, sister, continue to go through it. Yeah. <laughs> imagine somebody, I called someone to tell him that I'm going through hell and they're going to tell me to continue to go through it. They said, Let them violate. No, 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 people <laughs> listen we, we have to we have to go to it we have yeah. to go to it we can't want we have no easy choice. stuff no, no, have no, choice. no thank you we have to go through it mm -hmm. um yes he will use people to push us into fulfillment of our destiny um Sean, she said manada said first mega ball and sure and first <laughs> And it's so important. <laughs> and this, this, this is the best policy. Bazaar. And not necessarily who in a circle or who are your friends that are use as this in your first. You understand? So get that clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that's true. And some of we want if your friends, if your friends they're not able to 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 um you, you, like your circle that plays a very important role yeah um i think early this week i posted a video on the youtube channel talking about unsupported friends you see your circle people your circle it plays a crucial part in your growth mm -hmm. no if the people in your circle they're not supportive they're not um like you're not growing there's nothing that you can do around them no if you are supposed to tell a friend some good news yeah and your friend can't be happy for you your friend can can you know give you a thumbs up or something listen to me they're not ready to because in the first place you're in my circle for a reason i'm in your circle for a yes. reason and if i can't help you i don't see the purpose no, of I'm being sure. around you because one i just keep putting you back and it just you know make no sense and the reality is does reality, that make sense and the reality is listen okay every 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 friend has a purpose in your life i mean we can even look at jesus and mm -hmm. we can look at judas 
I mean, the purpose that Judas had. Um, trust me, not every friend was supposed to have an expectation of, because not every friend I go become the cliche friend and do, you know, all that they expected. Some friends are some friends for some seasons. Some of them become enemies. Some of them are destiny helpers. You understand? And Judas was a friend first until him, 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 him give up Jesus, not knowing say, him giving up Jesus is a part of why Christ had to reach. It's a part of what make Christ reach the cross, which is in destiny. You understand? So even in that, I mean, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, um, maybe, where is it? let me see if I can find it. Where, where there is great pain, where, is, where there is great pain, there is great purpose. But a lot of us, we don't want to feel the pain. No one wants to feel the pain. Like, no one, like, I don't want to feel the pain, but I, ha I know that I have to go through it. Because if I don't go through it, in one, help anyone too i won't learn the same situation just might find itself come back around to me and i don't know how to get over it like, so i don't we, we it's, it's it's a very hard thing to do and it's a very hard thing to say easier said than yeah, done very easy but thing. at one point we must be able to come to some um agreement that okay i'm going through this and it does not mean that i will be there for the rest of my life yeah um same friend that cannot clap yeah. when we win serves as a purpose yeah. and that is true. amen that, is, that and, is really really and the reality true. is as as we go through life we have to embrace the emotions that come because i mean not every day the will of god to make you feel bubbly not every day the will of god the will of god to make you feel happy and joyful let's face it the reality is it painful. Jesus said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus I say, yo, Jano, this one I have to do now. I mean, you know, me I beg your God, make it pass. Nevertheless, not thy will, not my will, but thy will be done. Yeah. You understand? So, I mean, it's necessary. We just have to go through it. We have to go through it. Necessary. At the topic, overcoming obstacles in life. Obstacles are things that prevent us from mm -hmm. reaching our destiny, and you know, to overcome it, it requires some level of pain because it's not something, it's not a walk over, it's not a push over. So, I mean, some deep level of forgiveness, some deep level of hurt will come to you when you need to let it go, you know, in every area. Have to, yeah, have to, have to. Um, so Sanji Bailey, he said, maybe we dwell too much in our human form, so we react to things human like, and that's true. Um, no, the spirit of God doesn't dwell with us like what every every single second. Yeah. No, we are humans, and we are going to get things wrong. Um, but there must be at some, at some point we can catch up to ourselves and and know that listen we, we just have to, to to set ourselves straight we have to set our minds straight because then if we are going to 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 just leave all the work up to god can't work can't work legend he said reminds me something god said to me a couple of days ago pain is adversary your where is that is that you got cut off that's the only thing he said i can't see the rest of it oh reminds me of something said to me a couple of days ago pain is not your adversary your perspective is that is powerful oh yeah oh, oh that that's that's a word there yeah that's a word there trust me it's not your adversary um your perspective is christopher pain is something that is terrible but must bring forth greatness just as without fire we cannot come out as gold paula said the devils we fight now in our youth we want to fight them we want to fight them them them, them, them come now if i know them for come 
and let them come and ride. so we can fight them off kill them and destroy them and then go for them business and what i would like us to play close attention to <laughs> yes um we are young people i mean i'm not a teenager right now but you know for argument's sake you know we are teenagers we are, we are young people joseph was a young guy when god sent him for god easy they mm-hmm. understand and send him through some rough challenges for make him go in a purpose and align him with destiny so i mean even this program now i'm so i'm literally so honored you know for god to do this great thing now that we as young people can go in at the bible you know see these things and apply them to our lives so when we buck up in painful situations we know exactly how to respond to them yeah, yeah. and for those who did not um hear this I, I spoke about it last week and this like, is an obstacle that even though we're young people we need to realize and and like deal with this i want every young people to 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 um, pay attention to this no if you as young as you are and if God wants, if I'm to use you, and even within your church, no, your pastor, he has the vision for the church. I spoke, I think I spoke about this last week. Yeah. The pastor has the vision. And if they, they are watching you, they're, they're over you. So if they don't see that you're at a place to preach, if they don't see that you're at a place to sing, and, and the praise and worship team on the choir yes. dance, then that is not something that you're supposed to be complaining about. Amen. If you're going to curse about Amen. it, then that only shows yeah. that you're not home. Yeah. And yet that is exactly Just why you can't be up to preaching, and singing, dancing. It's, it's really a pastor it of work the heart. Like that. So that is the obstacle that we get. It's really a pastor of the heart. Mm-hmm. It's a part of the process. We, yeah. learn. we can't expect to get up every day doing all these things and there's no there's no learning Amen. in the process Amen. Nope. Amen. i don't believe that i will um i saw paula said yes and speak out and say the devil i love this platform Amen. no the thing so as much as this platform is here um it's not for, for, for us to come and speak and it is for us to come and uplift the young people and to speak yeah. to us, Definitely. to speak to you guys. Definitely. And the, the thing is, a lot of young people out there, you know, they're really, they're really, really living for God. And I do believe that this is the time that we're, first of all, we're not only here for, for, the, for the believers, yeah. we're here for the unsaved too, and I'm praying that some conviction yeah. will be placed on even a backslider's life Definitely. and that they will come back to God. Definitely. Because at the end of the day, we can't just go for the saved people. We have to go for the for the backsliders. Yeah. We have to go for the unsaved too. Definitely. Because it's it's basically evangelism. Definitely. And no, I we, we, we're really finding um ways to to reach to, to 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 different people we're we're, yeah. we're quarantining but uh, there we, it does not stop evangelism Definitely. you can save young people in your church even myself we have a youth group um for my church and we have unsaved in that youth group so what even if you have that can you can still call that unsaved still yeah call them talk to them yet you, you're not a push you don't push the word of god on people yeah they're, they're they're not going anywhere yeah. you you you, t- you talk to them you drop in the word of god you you encourage them you do evangelism evangelism not stop because we're in her house yeah um shante today she what's it what's the word quarant qu- qu- some quarant fix something 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 she she you know like oh that word here yeah. that word i shall be using that word um paula said yes but as i said last week we have to break the silence because silent silent death is 
the worst. And and yes. And let me let me just say yeah. this, bro. As 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 young Christians, <laughs> we are going through so much stuff that we don't make mention to. We are going through so much challenges that right. we feel like nobody sees it. Because let me tell you something. As Joseph life portrayed it, Joseph said to his father, Daddy, this is a dream that God gave me. Right? And his father rebuked him. Yeah. Could it be the same thing that we have said dreams to pastors and may I, no, may I talk to some young people. We have said our dreams to members of the body of Christ. We have said our dreams to people in leadership and they have rebuked us. I am here to announce, I am here to say to you not because yeah. someone in leadership has abused you, has mis you know, has rebuked you. That means that you should let go of what God says to you. We see it clear that so Joseph certainly never let go of the word of God gave. Even though his father rebuked him, he held on. And that was one of the reasons, that was one of the things that pushed him into destiny, holding on to what God tells us to do. Yes. Yeah, man. Um, there are, there are a lot of stuff, Paula. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, we'll have to talk about it because these are the issues. You know, you go to certain church, you see some stuff, you know, people generally, you know, there are a lot of things needed to be addressed. And there are not a lot of young people mm -hmm. that are, you know, we have platforms such as this one where we can talk about certain stuff. We can reason and we, we, we can come together heal together you understand so i mean we have to do yeah. it like there are a lot of stuff what happen now where we are carry hurt and pain with leaders not agree with we and trust me a lot of us are hearing from god and some leaders them just not believe say boy god tell you that you understand and that even Mm -hmm. can lead to people leaving the church and i mean even now if you are on this alive and that is a case with you forgive that leader forgive everyone where you know members of the church will hurt you and start your process of healing you know just work on it put them before before god even though as you are dealing with this happy. yeah yes not many churches, Christopher said that not many churches are open to excess. Yeah. And while that is true, that is something we have to pray about. Definitely. Um, Definitely. <clears throat> and a corona, and a um, but we, we have to pray about that. Um, we have to pray about, you know, the leaders that are, you know, not paying attention to young people because they believe as if, you know, the young people, they, they don't have a say, they don't. But the thing is, you know, God is raising up a generation of young people that they're going to be so busy for God that, listen. And one thing, even when you're going to pray, yeah. and you, 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 you don't ever believe that you must act out of rebellion. Yeah. That's it. Paula said, That's it. true, church hurt bring rebellion and brokenness but as the pink we african must develop a white room spirit we have yeah. a strong white room really strong sister so that's great yeah. we, we must <laughs> we must develop that one because yeah, white room will not, <laughs> will not meet up yeah that's what i know for sure. um yeah, i'm going back i'm going back to god and a god earth me, um christopher i agree, i agree totally a lot of young people in the church know we do not get to voice our opinions. We do not get to talk. And I am not bashing any church or bashing anything. You know, if we did come on here for that, you know, I would, I would no. be a waste. You understand? I am addressing issues in the body of Christ in the churches where, I mean, it needs to be addressed. You know, there are a lot of things that are happening 
yeah. that people are being yeah. abused yeah. by and stuff like that. And someone has to say it. Someone has to stand up in the generation and say, look, this is stupidness and I mean, we are stand together. We're going to call out sin. We're going to call out injustice, pretty much. Yes. Um, Paula said, if we don't heal, we will bleed out on others. Deliverance Amen. and healing is necessary, and the brokenness was Amen. also necessary. Amen. Christopher also, sometimes we get hurt in church, and even as far as being rebuked and silenced, but they're just a case where you are being observed, and if you become sore, sore it just may be that you've missed it. Young people still need to remember to submit to leadership. Yeah. This is one thing you can't Amen. fight against. I love this point, um, Christopher. Amen. This is absolutely Amen. true. You Amen. feel as if because you're not being used, then you must rebel. You Amen. feel as if because you're not being used, you must leave your church. Amen. Not no go so. Not no go so. Amen. Trust me. Hey. Um, submit to leadership and pray. Bro. It's not, listen, stay at church and pray. Get your heat. And your deliverance. That should Go ahead, be the, Yeah, that should be the posture of our heart. There is nothing what justify us yes. to be rude to people. We should never be rude to leaders. Leaders are God placed and they are human beings nope. that can make mistakes. And we should always remember that. Um who was it in the Bible? Was it Anna? The lady where it got the temple and the priest was very rude to her. And she just humble herself. And I mean, when we read the scriptures, if it was her, I'm, I'm not sure. But when I read the scriptures, I'm going to say that, Master, whoa. Even though the preach approach to her was wrong, she humbled herself and she still respected him. And that is what I want us as Christians to do. Everyone won't agree. Sometimes God tells you something and your leader don't agree. Trust me, just go back to God. And God will direct you. God will put you in places. God will reveal to them in time. Because Joseph father never said it. Yes. Joseph father never said the dream of Joseph I said to him, you know. But when Joseph, when the famine come and Joseph father see what happened, then he could understand the word. And that is the thing. Some leaders can't see it now. But they are going to see it when God take you there. You understand? And we have to just understand that Eventually. as well. Eventually, yes. Yeah, we have to just understand that as well. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, timing. It's all about timing. All about timing. Amen. All about timing. Sometimes we want some position or we want some things way too fast and we're not ready for it. Just like this, um, this right here. I got this vision from 2018 and I could not have come on a platform whatsoever and do this discussion because one, I can't talk about, as I said before, I can't speak about things that I'm not delivered from and I've not been there. That no makes no sense. No. There is no point in it. Nothing at all. So it's really about timing and God's timing is perfect. Perfect. God's timing is perfect. Amen. Um, Christopher said, then they run out and jump in other church and get messed up. Then keep yeah. running from church to church. Because... Stay on, stay on the church and get yeah. parents and people. because the reality is for more, mm -hmm. because right bro yeah if, yes, if, if, if i am bleeding mm -hmm. if i got a wound hearing. if i got a wound in kingston and i am in a car right when me drive from kingston go portmore me still are yeah. bleeding up because I have a wound, right? So the thing yes. is, if we get a wound at church and we decide to, yo, I'm going to leave the church here, we left with a wound and we are still bleeding. And when we left from Kingston and go more, we are still bleeding. And yes. what majority of the time happens is that we pick up a next wound when we leave where we should have been. Right? Mm -hmm. And that even results yes. to a lot of us being backsliders and we turn back and we believe that God not dead with we and God is not this and God is not that. But no, it's 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 just a it's not a pastor of humility. You understand humility endures. No. 
humility is a trust me the fruit of the, the bible said the fruit of this one of the fruit of the spirits are long suffering in long suffering you will find humility long, well, yeah trust me well so i mean it's really just a posture of the heart we have to understand changing locations now you know you understand it it doesn't when we run god a person the church no. people still there what the devil can use forget you so we, it's not an escape so as young people yeah. we need to remind ourselves that well some of so we need true. to remind ourselves because some of we really don't know but for those who know we should always try to remind ourselves that listen leaving is not always the best thing to do but what, what we can do is right. take the life of joseph against all odds you can still win and allow the lord to do great things with your life Amen to that. Amen. And before we go, let me read these. Um, uh, and God will even heal that relationship with you and the leader. We just afford we relax. Amen. Ourselves. Happy. Amen. Happy. Right? Amen. Like how everybody want the prophet and not know that the office of a prophet is not as glamorous as it seems. Just, True, it's a lonely road. The life of a just, prophet is a lonely walk. And this, I think another thing is knowing the voice of God and hearing it behind your leadership. And before I, before we and go, the process will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go, let me just address that. Listen, everyone can be rich. Because if everybody rich, no one will no one will be a farmer. Because uh, everybody are just going to buy the produce, and there will be no one to generate the produce. Everyone can yes. be a prophet. Because if everybody be a prophet, who who are we going to prophesy to? No. Everybody can be a pastor. Everybody can be, you know. And a lot of these things are people. I mean, young people we inexperienced and we we we, we, we rejected. So we try to be seen and the reality is that's a lot of what push people these days it's not genuineness of the heart what is pushing a lot of people these days is just the reality so i guess so more be seen and me try to prove people wrong so i mean the notion of everybody want to be in a profit or whatever trust me that's we could cut that out of our generation you understand that happened previously that happened now yes but make us make it make we we'll put a full stop to it now that's true amen. amen to that um i saw a comment here um so he, haha, true and hurt that comes with it then we end up using gifts for life, witchcraft, for personal gain. Mr. Christopher, sir. That, that there? Yep. That one is true. That one is absolutely true. You know, um, Mr. Cardinal, I want to thank you so much. Thank, thank you so, so, so much for coming and speaking yeah. to us on, on these obstacles. Listen, I, 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 I had my book. And I had this point, so whenever I feel like I'm going, you know, I, and and we, because we all need, we all do need some help. We all do need assistance. We all need deliverance. Amen. We all need something, Amen. right? Yes, so let us build each other. Let us not be all for ourselves. Amen. We can't be all for ourselves. That that will never work. That is, we can't be selfish. Amen. Right. So, trust me. I I really did learn something new. No, they said that you learn something new every day. And that's true. I thank you so much for sharing Amen. us tonight. And I will not be telling you guys who is coming next week because I I'm I have not settled as yet. I will be doing that tonight. So by tomorrow, um, I will be putting out um that that poster. But it will be a great, it will be a great discussion, just like this one. I'm probably going to dream about this discussion tonight because it was that amazing i want to thank you guys so 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 much for joining it was a pleasure i will see you guys
is next week at 8 p.m. right here. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Youth Empowerment RF underscore. It's at the bottom here. Um, all, all other details are at the bottom. Um, oh, be, please, please, please be reminded about the project that will be coming up soon. That 2020 is, is not over. 2020 is not a fear. So I still do believe in keeping these projects on, 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 on board. So the um, startup plan, the startup project, um, that would be helping um, young people, like those who desire um, to become an entrepreneur. And um, we'll be funding you guys $20,000, $50,000 um, to start up your business. You can do a lot of $50,000. And you will. it's free. The sign-up is free. Just shoot us a an, uh, an private message, whether on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or by email send us your full name and we'll get back to you so that's just one and guys are for the flyers for the, for the year so be sure to tune in and i will see <laughs> yes 2020 not done it's still a key. <laughs> that's true that's true and again mr codner and sean take off Hi, <laughs> people. Listen, they, these two. I'm um, actually, they're um, they're actually two persons right now. Two of the people that I'm actually looking up to because they are showing us what it is like to wait. They're showing us what it is like for God's perfect person to come to us. No rush, marriage. Marriage will come when it will come. Amen. Um. So guys, I'm really proud of you. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, everybody. <laughs> Today is Shanti's birthday, yes. if you did not know. <laughs> we say our husband got all out and the, all of these nice, lovely stuff. Yeah. And nobody gets, um, what do you call it, March <laughs> fever. <laughs> because it just might not be your time yet. Keep fever. praying. Forgot to fix you. Your perfect husband and your perfect wife. And that's that's <laughs> all right. Yeah. So happy birthday to you, Shante. <laughs> We're saying something, Gabon. Huh? Hi. <laughs> yeah, You're saying something? Yeah, I'm just saying be healed. I mean, everyone just be healed and trust the Lord for his timeline. I mean, and everybody are gonna get married young. Some people, you know, have to wait a little while. Well, some people, God send your husband, but you know, change, you know, you can't receive him as yet. You know, it varies as to people, but yes, I mean, you know, just wait, yeah, man, a two and a half years more wait, and it pays. Just step on somebody. <laughs> Amen. Yes. It, it does pay off, and I, honestly, listen, the, I, the, I believe that these people, they're waiting on, on, on you and Shanti, you know, to come and, and, and tell us. The, like what is it that we must do and the process and all of these things about marriage because we need to be educated we want to hear it from you guys so i want to pray about it because i want to come and more want, want to come and slap with the real truth i don't want to hear you know oh like we just want to come to with real truth make it salt make it liquid because i believe a lot of us were running down marriage and it is not our time Trust we're not trying to set ourselves in that position yeah. for Trust god to um put us in that place yeah. and say okay you're ready to, to 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 be a wife. You're ready to be a a a, a, a husband. We're definitely sure. What Listen to me. Yeah. We waiting. So we're gonna pray about it. We we wait on you guys. <laughs> yes. Ma okay. Yeah, man, thanks for having me again. So I think Shanti said that it's coming. <laughs> right. Absolutely, absolutely, and I do pray that this will not be the last time we'll be seeing more of you. Amen. Amen. all right so again thank you all for watching thank you for sharing um be subscribed to the youtube channel this video will be posting there too as soon as it download because if i slow but it will be posting there soon Amen. be sure to subscribe to the channel thanks for sharing thanks for commenting everything love you guys Amen. take care and have a wonderful night Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's our last time coming like it now. I am. I'm pressing broadcast again.